Department of Corrections on uh, the line here. Good morning, Major. Good morning. Uh, so I guess just uh, first, the last we heard from the Department of Corrections, as far as I know, uh, was that the CDC had made the site visit. I know you had spoke with uh, Adriana. Can you just fill us in um, and just give us an update on uh, what's happening with the prison and COVID-19? Um, again, we had some, um, we had a, a group of officers uh, that were put on quarantine uh, as per the director on April 6th. On April 9, uh, public health came into our facility and did a contact investigation. Uh, as a result, they determined that uh, at that time that six of our senior officers and five of the recruits had close contact with the recruit that tested positive. Uh, so all of them are uh, they are going on a total of 13 altogether. 13 altogether uh, are uh, expected to be tested by uh, public health. That was April. When was that? When, when was the close contact established? The inspection team came in on April 9th. So over a week ago, right? Right. And we're and, still waiting uh, for them to be tested? Well, uh, no, my understanding, again, I, I don't know all this, but my understanding that there were a, a group tested yesterday and the day before. Okay. Uh, were, you, were you aware if any of them were exhibiting any symptoms between um, when CDC came out there? No, no, okay. not not that I'm aware of, not at this time. Okay. Uh, out of the uh, 13 that were tested, uh, seven of them, we got word that seven of them are expected to return to work on April 18th. What about the remaining six? They're still waiting for some test results, I believe. Because the tests the test were given, I believe, yesterday and the day before. So they're still okay. waiting on a few results. So they still got to run them. Is that right. what, what they still got to run them? Yes. Yeah. Whatever their process is when they're, uh, I'm not sure if they're pro public health process on uh, the testing. Okay. Yeah. Because if they were ran yesterday, they would have yeah. come out that night. Right. Yeah. All right. So, so I guess we can assume since they haven't been cleared to return to duty that uh, they haven't run the tests or, I mean, you know, I don't think we can assume they were positive yet, right? Because last right. yesterday's results were zero. Zero positives, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, we're still waiting for more results. Right. Okay. Uh, you I said seven. I'm know. sorry. You said seven were cleared. Were those the senior officers? Or you know, they... uh, uh, there were, no, that was a mixture of recruits and the senior officers. What okay. was the nature of the close contact, uh, Major? You know, sir, I, I, you know, Chris, I don't, I don't really know all the specifics on what their investigation was. I mean, they came in, they did their questioning, and I wasn't really part of that. I didn't, I didn't get too close to them as they were doing their job. So I don't, I don't know what they were looking for or how close you had to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But none of the, none of the close contacts were inmates or pretrial detainees. No, not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, you, and we wanted to get you on the phone because yesterday we had Attorney General uh, Levin Camacho uh, call on, on and, and basically say that, um, you know, nonviolent offenders are going to be uh, booked and released. And uh, the big reason was that he uh, had brought up the prison and, you know, how um, scary it would be for us to have a COVID-19 outbreak in uh, DOC. So uh, that being said... Um, Major, it kind of looks like the uh, the attorney general, at, at least, is very, very concerned about uh, what's happening at the prison. So, uh, what's your take on that? And and you know, should we be as concerned as the AG that it's so it's you know the potential is so bad that we need to just book and release people? Well, I mean, there's always a, a huge uh, potential of the prison. That's that's always been a concern from day one. Uh, we've even had other attorneys and even the federal public defender before asking us to release people or making the uh, the argument to release detainees in light of the COVID-19. Now, in regards to the AGs, again, EOC, we don't play any role in, in the, the attorney general's decision to release or not release. Uh, however, with that being said, you know, our director has been working with the uh, the attorney general's office, again, and just asking if they could just take a look at who is being confined and you know if in their best judgment they feel they don't need to be here then release them mm -hmm. uh overall our population 
since the COVID-19 has de- decreased, uh, decreased, even including the booking reports, the daily booking has, has gone down uh, since the uh, this COVID-19 thing started. Yeah. Okay. What about the um, detainees, the detainees that are already in there and are, they are awaiting trial? Yes. How has the numbers decreased? Like how many have been released? Use the um, pretrial detainees. Okay, so I mean, I I, I have to do more research on the exact numbers because you know we release a uh, we we release a uh, uh, quite a quite a few uh, different not just detainees but we have also inmates that we release. Uh, Wait, you're releasing inmates? Well, as a result of inmates? COVID? No, no, no. We have inmates that maybe complete their sentence. Okay. You know, uh, or uh, parole violators that uh, were, were uh, their, their sentence was done. So we okay. released m- more than you know just detainees. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. So I'm not talking about inmates. I'm talking about the pretrial detainees then. Well, okay. I would have to look more on my numbers. I have to. I have to run a report on that one to get all the numbers. But you have uh, a rough estimate. Is it 150, um, couple hundred. It'll it'll probably be about a couple hundred, yes, that have been getting released. Since, but you have to give me a, I mean, from what date to what date, a start date, because uh, I would have to check my numbers. I guess I mean, since uh, the start of COVID-19, which was, uh, I guess, March uh, 17? 12. The yeah. current, yeah, it's a current. Right. I, I would need to look at my numbers and, and run the report and, and double check mm-hmm. uh, and weed out those that were released as part of their full-time release. Right. I would need to look at that, and then I can get back to you with those numbers. Major, okay. uh, let yeah. me... Yeah, the reason why we're asking is because, you know, Lieutenant Governor last week said that you were working with the judiciary um, and the Department of Corrections, the AG's office, uh, to determine who can be released for nonviolent crimes right. to right. alleviate, you know, the over the, the crowding. crowding. Is, is uh, Major, this, riddle me this, is the uh, release of these uh, f- people, is it... So that we can have a less crowded prison and then maybe entertain some semblance of social distancing. Uh, yeah, that, I mean that's 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 part of it. Is we don't want to stuff uh, eight to nine people in a single cell. We need to keep the jail cells. I, I you know at, at least on my side for the more violent offenses that we need to keep separated. Uh, the Afghani detention facilities population over the last few weeks has has went down dramatically compared to what it was before right our, our overall population in the prison uh, as of yesterday was 619 that's overall uh, this time this same time in January or uh, in, in January we were we were about 684 690 uh, about the same date in January so mm. our numbers have gone down right but have, have they gone down enough so that if we get uh, people who commit crimes like, you know, terrorizing, uh, you're throwing hollow blocks into people's houses, uh, are, are we, do we have enough room to maybe use more judgment and like lock some of these guys up until they get a court date or? I mean, I mean, yes, sir. We have, we have room in the prison uh, again, but the, uh, the intent is to try to minimize. And again, I'm not, we're not part of the. I don't. We don't take part in the AG's decision on who gets released right. and who does yeah. not get released. That's mm-hmm. not us. We, we don't make those calls. Right. It's just mm-hmm. in their judgment, that was the best thing to do. And you know, we we do uh, appreciate the AG's uh, working with us and, and trying to ensure that only the most violent are locked up, or those that really need to be locked up are locked up. Mm-hmm. But so, again, at the end of the day, we're we're here to take whoever we need to take uh, that mm-hmm. needs to be confined. Um, you said the overall population six nineteen, right? Currently, uh, yes, that was as of yesterday. As of yesterday, how much is of that are actual inmates versus um, pretrial detainees? So our inmate, our local inmate population right now is about three hundred and forty. The local detainee population is two hundred and fourteen. Okay, but then we also have federal detainees. Mm-hmm. We have immigration. We have contempt of court. Mm-hmm. Parole violators, overnighters, and born of arrest. Okay, and that would make up the entire population. But as far as local detainees, uh, that's two hundred and fourteen right now. Local detainees. 
And what about uh, federal? The federal side, we have a 36. Okay. So, uh, Major, I, I just want to ask, uh, are you guys still getting uh, people that confined? Like, you know, what was Monday to Thursday? Uh, did you get anybody that was uh, booked and confined there? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, last night, I believe there was four, four or five last night. On the 14th of April, there was nobody. Nobody came in on the 14th. Uh, I think there may have been nobody on the 15th. I have to double check my numbers there. But for this morning, we had four. I believe four came in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, but it is. It uh, overall the booking numbers have decreased. Mm. Uh, so on the average, before we were getting 11 to 15 a day. Uh, now we're down to about three, maybe four a day. And when you say booking, that means, you know, they're arrested, they're go, yes, they're yes. booked and right. confined. And right. make, can you just clarify for me, when they're arrested by GPD, they go to DOC for book and confinement. Right. And then is that when the NTA is issued by the AG after reviewing the police reports? So there's there's two ways they can get an NTA. The mm-hmm. first reason, the first way is when GPD arrests them, GPD on certain offenses has the ability to issue an NTA at the police station. Mm-hmm. And and those are for you know probably petty misdemeanors, lower level crimes. GPD will process them and and book and release them at their level. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, GPD also will book and confine. Now, once they all they're confined, we give the overnight listing to the attorney general's office, and they would review it along with the police reports, and then they would send us a disposition later that afternoon. Mm-hmm probably around 12 o'clock or after one and say, okay, these following people will be magistrated. Uh, these following people issue a notice to appear, which is an NTA. Yeah. And then we just, we just comply with those instructions and, and, you know, do what we're instructed to do. Are you aware of that Harmon Vries case? The one that we're uh, reporting on? You know, I no, I did not see no reports on that. I did see something on Facebook and the media. About well, neither it. did the AG. I was just wondering interview? if they were if they were booked and confined. They were confined. Okay, were and then the NTA yeah. came in and they were released. Um, right. Yes, and then later that day the notice to appear uh, mm-hmm. instructions came out okay. and they were released. That's nice. Were they happy about that? Well, I, yeah, no, sir, I know. That, that's in a Ganya lost up, so I, oh. I didn't get personally. To, <laughs> I didn't get uh, personally to see them and talk to them about it. I wonder if they're freaking out. Like, what are you serious? Rick, <laughs> we get to go. Uh, yeah, send a thank you note to A.G. Leaving Camacho. You stop. <laughs> Major, can we just switch gears? Uh, because I, I got to ask you about the inmates, uh, the detainees. We're getting a lot of, um, you know, comments and, and calls, and I get a lot of side messages about uh, the inmates uh, and uh, the type of, you know, protections that they have inside the prison. And I know that you guys have stopped all the drop-offs, and so... Uh, how are we ensuring the safety of, of the inmates, uh, Major? And I guess let, we'll just go into this, but let me just ask the first question. What do you do when an inmate or a detainee is exhibiting flu-like symptoms? So, Chris, we have, uh, like I said in the past, we have GMH medical staff in-house. So we have our own internal uh, medical team. If an inmate is displaying any kind of symptoms, they would immediately be referred to the medical staff. Then the medical staff will do their evaluation. We also have a doctor, uh, eight to five, seven, uh, five days a week here, and on call if you need them. If they're disturbing any symptoms, they'll go to the medical staff, the doctor will make the determination what needs to be done after that, if they, depending on their symptoms. And uh, if then if they need to go to GMH, then that's what we would do. We would transport them to where they need to go. How many? And we'll take our and we'll take our guidance there from there forth from the medical staff. Mm-hmm. So you, you have a clinic. That's where you, you had a clinic there. Yeah, yeah. How many yeah. beds are in that clinic? Say again. How many beds are in the clinic, or do you have beds uh, there? The or? clinic in 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 uh, Manila can hold about three, but we've also uh, been working and we've identified another area of the prison that, in the event we need to isolate those that are showing symptoms. Uh, have not tested positive, but are showing maybe symptoms of it. We have a, a, a place in mind of the prison of where to where to house them. Mm-hmm. Do you have uh, anybody to, that you've had to isolate? 
Not at this point, no. Okay. So you haven't had no, no inmate or detainee at the Department of Corrections or gotten your lockup has been tested for COVID-19, Major? No, sir. And and even in the test site, that, that test would not be at DOC's call. It would not, you know, um, it would have to go through the medical process and then the medical people would determine who gets tested and who doesn't get tested. That that would not be our call. Right. Uh, you know, and again, because of the possibly the limit, the limited number of testing kits available, uh, they all have to be screened. And if they meet certain category or criteria, then, you know, it will be the call again of the medical. Let and me no one's... And no one's uh, came to to DOC and said, you know, I, I'm not feeling well. I need to be tested. I want to be tested. Have there been requests? As far as I know, no. Uh, they do have, a, a, we have a process, a sick call process in place where if the inmate does feel ill or need to see a doctor, they can submit a request. But that's just for your normal medical issues. Now, we've already briefed our staff and we've even let the inmates know that if they feel symptoms, they need to inform the staff as soon as possible, and then the staff will call the medical staff and respond accordingly to their protocols. Uh, Major, have there because I'm just going to be honest with you, uh, there's a lot of anxiety I've heard from inmates and detainees of themselves, uh, and I know that that you know that they've been in communication with the media. Uh, but mm-hmm. what what I was concerned about was repercussions. I was I was told that. Um, when uh, the inmates and detainees reached out to the media and had kind of called you out um, for uh, things that you had said, that there was repercussion for that, and that they, the, um, I don't know how it went down, but basically they had shared with us that yeah, they, they got chewed out, and you know they they were told you know don't talk to the media. So is that is that a reality? Um, I mean, you know, I'm not aware of anything of that nature, Chris. Uh, you know, we're doing our part. We're getting the supplies. And, and, and yes, there is some frustration uh, because we've had to cancel visitation. We've had to cancel incoming. We stopped all religious activities. We basically had to shelter in place. But, you know, what they're doing is no different than what everybody else is doing at home. Shelter in place. And that's what we're doing. And, of course, some are upset about it. And, you know, we, we do give them cleaning supplies. Uh, of course, our supplies are not endless. So we have to maximize whatever supplies we do have to make sure that every unit is afforded some cleaning supplies and, and other items. Uh, you know, we issued them government soap and government toothpaste, and it may not taste well, it tastes good, but that's what we have to do for now. I mean, they want their special soap and special shampoo, and that there's a time for that, and right now it's not the time. So uh, there's a lot, it's a lot of stress, but we are, we are doing our best to, uh, to make sure, ensure their safety and the staff I mean, I've got calls from the families asking when can we drop off incoming and when can we do this? And I'm just saying, you know, we, we just have to wait, get through this whole thing. And so right now, our prisoners are no different than what's going on in the community. We have to shelter in place and get through this. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Major Again. I didn't mean to make you mad, Major. No, no, I mean, you know, it's part of it. I've been here 26 years. Right? <laughs> yeah, is, I know. This is part of it. I'm not, I'm not immune to any of it, but we are doing the best we can. And we do, you know, the, the director and the deputy director and the warden, they, they, they and, and myself included, we take all these uh, concerns of these inmates seriously. And we do everything we can to, to rectify it. Of course, some are not happy and we get that. We understand that. It's, we're not going to make everybody happy about what what's going on, but... Uh, you know, we're, we're still, as of now, still COVID-free. Mm-hmm. And if this thing gets into our prison, like everyone said, it, it could wreak havoc on everything. Mm-hmm. Mainland prisons right now are having uh, oh, yeah. a major issues. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not funny. They're having mm-hmm. major issues right now when it gets into their system, mm-hmm. into their correctional facility. But we're doing everything we can just to make sure it doesn't happen. And, and that's including, you know, if we don't have to have somebody confined, then, you know, let them out, you know. Right. Let them uh, be out there, but we're doing our best we can, and, and uh, we're, we are even considering uh, uh, we have some masks that the director is looking at uh, providing the inmates, at least, as another precautionary, so, so we're going to be looking at that also.
Well, that, that's good, uh, Major. I think, I think, and, and you know, uh, it wasn't just the inmates and detainees. I'm getting those uh, calls from the families uh, too. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Is is I there any we, is there any thought at all being given to uh, maybe obviously not the visitation, but the drops of of you know things that uh, the the inmates are used to getting uh, in normal times, or is that just such a logistical nightmare for you guys to have to deal with setting up a process where? You know, people can drop things for screen for contraband, right, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So, is that just ne- never not going to happen during this COVID nineteen time, or is there any kind of discussion or planning well, going into re- re- reopening that option? Yeah, I, I won't say never, Chris. Uh, the director has we have talked about it about doing some sort of modified uh, incoming schedule where uh, certain items, mostly hygienic items, uh, soap, shampoo and things like that would be allowed to come in. Uh, we do have a, uh, a plan that we're working on. We just haven't finished all the details because again, you know, it, it is a, it's a very touchy uh, issue, but the director does want to want to open up some sort of incoming as soon as possible. And we're just, we're just, we're working on it, but it's not finalized yet. So I won't say it won't happen. It will not happen throughout this COVID-19, but we just ask that they, they be patient with us. And again, all these restrictions in place are meant to also protect the inmates' family, right, from running around out, in the, out there trying to find all these items, but also protect the inmates. So, mm-hmm. you know, the family members out there, you know, that they could at least rest assured that we're trying everything we can to make sure they are they are kept safe. Right. And that's you what know, they want to hear. Right? Major, when you take a look at the Theodore Roosevelt, you you, mm-hmm. you saw that the military, they went in and they mm-hmm. immediately started to test everybody, you know, right. and separate, you know, those who tested negative from those who tested positive. Right. Do you foresee that or is there any push to see, t- to make, to ha- to let that happen at DOC where you test all the inmates and so you know, you know, who's positive, who's negative? I No, not, not, not at this point. Again, our testing... We take the guidance from the medical side on what needs to be done, mm-hmm. and so we refer, to, we rely on their judgment and their, you know, to, to tell us what needs to be done. Uh, because even on the the Roosevelt, remember the Roosevelt, the issue is these, you know, these guys are not criminals; they're not convicted of crimes, and mm-hmm. so even if we tested people, and we're going to move them, separate them from the non-tested, we have to be careful because of their crimes and crime partners and where do you mm-hmm. move them you move them to another housing unit i mean if i have uh three people for assault and they're tested negative and then i have someone with attempted murder i mean i cannot put them in the same housing unit or same area yeah. so we would have to have multiple areas to separate uh based on the testing but also their offense mm-hmm. we would have to separate based on their offense and do they get along with each other, are they crime partners, are they testifying against each other? Mm. We would have to take all these things into consideration if we start doing something like that. So, mm-hmm. cause we don't, we don't have no hotel to put them in. We mm-hmm. can't separate them uh, by hotels and things. So those, those will be issues, logistical issues we would have to work out if they decide to go that way. Uh, and again, uh, right now, no one's showing symptoms. And so again, we're just taking our lead from public health. Okay. Right. Uh, Major, how about contraband? Is that still an issue? Are people throwing stuff over the, the fence line? Has it, there been a decrease since we're all supposed to be staying home? Well, I, I mean, you know, we've still had uh, one or two attempt to throw things over. Uh, I'm optimistic that it, it, there's a decrease in it, but it, it's something that still is going to happen. It, it's, it's, you know, because you still got people out there. And, uh, but... But so you guys caught are, you guys caught um, somebody trying to throw over contraband. Well, we didn't catch uh, nobody. No, not say, but somebody, but, but the contraband. Find, we did find some contraband uh, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, thrown in the back of the prison. What was it? And, uh, you know what? I don't have the report. Uh, it looked like Copenhagen and cigarettes and lighter. Oh, not uh, like hand sanitizer and uh, surgical masks and. No. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, you know, toilet paper, uh, they throwing toilet paper over. No, not yet. We still have a lot of that. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm just checking. Drugs. <laughs> so it's just yeah. uh, the typical stuff you mean. Yeah. It's typical. I don't, I don't, I can't recall any drugs, uh, but you know, I may be mistaken, but I know cigarettes and lighters and Copenhagen. I've seen, I've seen, uh, they're trying to throw it over. 
Okay. Uh, you know, Major, we're getting some comments here. Uh, uh, with all due respect, please urge mandatory testing, assurance of the community. Yes, uh, the, but, I yeah, I know. And, and also, uh, there was a comment here. Uh, thank you, Major, for the update uh, for the yeah. public. And that's coming from a family member of someone who's uh, behind bars over there. Yeah, and you know, I'm always willing to answer any questions any family member has and, you know, try to assure them we're doing the best that we can. And if they need to reach out to me, they can only email me or call here at the director's office and, you know, I will talk to them. But again, the director and the deputy director and the upper management, we really just, we just want to ensure this thing doesn't get into our facility. We're really, really take this seriously and we're really concerned. I mean, I got sleepless nights thinking if this thing gets in here, what are we going to do mm-hmm. with the staff and the inmates? And mm-hmm. it, it's terrifying. It's really scared to see what what could happen. And so, we just ask that the public and the, the inmates out there just just be patient with us and and shelter in place. And you know, uh, what you're doing again is no different than what your family's expected to do at home or whatever most other people are. We're all we're all basically on lockdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just go to work and work at home work at home we don't even go anywhere so we're, we're all kind of basically on lockdown yeah and uh, just to work with us and be patient and we will get through this and go back to some resemblance of normal normalcy uh, shortly as soon as we're able to get through this major right. I, th- I think that's important i think people need to hear uh, in so many ways with this COVID 19 um they need to hear that you're concerned and that you're taking it seriously and that mm-hmm. it's affecting you and i think when they hear that they kind of know that you know, it, it humanizes it. And, uh, you know, you being, you know, one of the top dogs there at the prison, maybe they think, oh, he doesn't he doesn't give a damn. But, I mean, you're here telling us you do, and I, I can hear I can hear in it in your voice. voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we really do. I mean, the director, like I said, when we have our meetings and stuff, it's just it's never stressed enough that we have to protect the population. We have to protect the population. And, uh, again, it, it's even for our staff, it's, it's we're really concerned about it. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Major Uggen. Um I just want to ask maybe later you can get me those numbers, though. Yes, I will. I will. Uh, I will get it as soon as I can get my computer started. I okay. Give you the numbers and email it to you. And, and so the you results, to, hopefully, uh, the the um, remaining seven. I think you said or six are okay. The remaining, excuse me, the remaining what? You said thirteen were tested. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Within okay, the past right. two yeah. days, seven yeah, were okay. cleared to go back. Work. Right, right. So if we get more information, I, I will let you know. Right. Uh, right now, that's all the information we have, and okay. then I will get you your your uh, your numbers. Yeah. As far as the the pretrial, how many, yeah. how many were released? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I broke it down uh, last week, but I will need to update it and and uh, make sure I send you the correct data. Okay. 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 Be safe. Yeah. Thank you, Major. Appreciate it, Major. Okay. No problem. Anytime. Okay. Uh, oh, and we'll make it a lot of times. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Wash your hands, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Major. Okay. There you go, Major Anton uh, Uggen. Um, and I just want to tell you why we're hearing from Major Anton Uggen instead of uh, the director. Well, actually, I don't know why, but uh, the director um, allows Anton to come and speak because mm-hmm. you know, and let's just be real here. He's been there twenty six years. Yeah. Uh, director Carbolito is kind of new on the job, so I actually appreciate that. You know, it's better than getting the director on who's gonna, uh, you know, be we're we gonna look at that or I don't, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he doesn't know, but obviously, uh, you know, Major Anton has a, a lot of experience. institutional knowledge yeah. and He's experience. He's been there yeah. for almost, what you said, three, three yeah. decades. Yeah. 